that. Ooh. Yeah, so we were together for a long time, and you know, oh, really? it was not healthy. Um, okay. You know, not not necessarily like physically abusive, but a lot of emotional abuse and gaslighting. And and back then, at age sixteen or however old I was when I first got together with him, I I had no idea. I just thought we fought a lot. Oh, okay. All right. So it was like it was like a tug of war uh, to to have that relationship. Did it feel like a tug of war, or, or did it? What did it feel like to you? If you had to describe it uh, to to your daughter, uh, and 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 you were warning her or some other young person, how would you describe that relationship? That was a bad relationship. Emotionally, how would you describe? Emotionally, it? I was depressed all the time I was always crying it was constant fighting and that's not normal and that's not healthy um my parents hated him which they've pretty much hated every one of my narcissistic relationships which there haven't been that many but you know these these three particular people that I'm talking about um you know and there are these long-term relationships where in my mind maybe not in my high school mind but you know, I knew I needed to get out because there was something wrong, but it's that, um, like the trauma bond, I guess, that, and, and the hope too, that it will get better. Did, did, uh, did you pick up anything out of that relationship uh, that you started at that age that carried over into the next relationship? I think it was, it's just that passion, that initial lust and passion, like, oh, I really, really adore this person. And uh -huh. that's so typical. They paint a picture of this beautiful future together and happily ever after. And I guess ever since I was little, I was just so connected to that idea because my parents have been together, you know, they got married when they were young. Um, mm -hmm. And I think I always held on to that ideal. And, uh, that ideal, uh, what, once it started to become challenged, once that ideal uh, began to be attacked because it wasn't really turning out uh, the way you thought, uh, did you ever give up on that? and think that it, it, love was lost, as it were? I always thought I just had to work harder because I, you know, I saw, yeah. not that my parents ever argued or anything, but in, in my mind, that was like the perfect no, of course, relationship. Right. And that's, that's how it was supposed mm -hmm. to be. You meet somebody when you're young and it's understandable ever after. I just have to plug my phone in. So I don't, I don't want to. No, no, no. You go ahead and do that. Um, now, now, now I have to, I have to say, when uh, when young people when young people have a, a bad experience romantically, sometimes it can it can have a carryover into other relationships. Uh, but uh, you decided to to make your way through life, and you you went to Mexico with your daughter. Right, I went to Mexico with my daughter. When you when you got to Mexico. Somebody found you interesting and wanted to talk to you right? and get your attention because you had it going on like that and uh, you caught his eye. Right. And because you caught his eye, well, why don't you tell us what happened? So Were you at the airport? Was it at the airport? Yeah, was that the, the airport? The second, second I got to Mexico, okay. the second I got so go ahead, to Mexico. So I was single. Oops, see, this is going to fall now. So I was like single for quite some time and I wasn't there looking for anybody, obviously, but, um, uh -huh. you know, the, mind your own business, minding my business. Oh my goodness. Hopefully this doesn't keep falling. I want you to know you got the best ceiling in, in, in the whole, in the whole block right there. <laughs> there we go. All right. So, okay, this is not going to fall now. So you're minding your own business. And if it doesn't, you know what? It's okay. See, look, it's, see, it's okay. It has, a, it's got its mind made up. Am I so, hey, that's okay. We could, we could walk around the room. This, this is, this is not a NBC. This is not, you know, big time right, production here. I'm hoping this will work. Okay. Uh, hopefully. If Go not, ahead. I'll put my computer behind 
that and we'll see if that works. Okay. In Mexico, well, I, I just got off the plane and you know those guys that the uh, pilots warn you about or the uh, flight attendants, they're like, don't stop for those people in the khaki pants because they're going to try to sell you a timeshare. <laughs> well, I must have missed that message <laughs> because <laughs> the first thing okay. that happened is I stopped for the guy in the khaki pants and he's like, oh, hey, pretty lady, come over here. You need your map. And um, oh, wait, 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 hold on. Wait, time off for a second. I got to make sure I understand this line that was given to you that worked so well. He had khaki pants on and he said, Hey, pretty lady. No, I wasn't even pretty lady. Okay. It was like, uh, senorita. Let me write that down so I can warn my daughters not to fall. <laughs> wait, wait, he said, What? What was it? What was it? Senorita. It wasn't pretty lady. <laughs> So suavecito, ay, 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 muy caliente, muy caliente, ay, ay, ay. Okay, sorry. So that was what he said. Oh, I'm going to have, a, I'm gonna have to have a long weekend talk with my daughters to know what they need to be careful of when they go back. The guy with the khaki pants. All right, go ahead. The guy with the khaki pants. Well, the, ladies, guys with khaki pants. Wait a minute. Let me check, make sure. Okay, so the guys with khaki pants. I don't have khaki pants. No, beware of guys in khaki pants. Okay, go ahead. So go ahead. he was like, oh, you have to come over and get your map. It's really big. You know, there's there's like tons of buses outside the airport. Do you know where you're going? This and that. I'm like, well, you know, no, not really. So <laughs> Wait, so he was so he was helpful. He created a scenario which he proved to be helpful to which, you. Which, well, at least in his which people in the timeshare business know to do that because it's going to bring you over there. And he's like, Oh, yeah, I'm of course, of course. Yeah. To be by yourself in Mexico. And I'm like, no. <laughs> so <laughs> he invited me to go. Uh, to that's place. when you were, that's when you were supposed to say, I am not by myself. I have an entourage of bodybuilders. They're coming any moment. I, they have, I, we're doing a, we're doing a calendar shoot today. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I should have said that. I'll be in I should have said that. Okay, go ahead. All right. So, um, tell me more. Oh, now obviously he. I was over there at his booth, and um, okay. he was telling me about his resort, which happened to be right next door to my resort. Like, I don't know how that. Happened, Ooh. But, in all of Cancun, our resorts were next to each other. So he's like, oh, I'll come and pick you up. Do you want to have breakfast and check out my resort? You'll get a free whatever. I don't even remember what it was. I'm like, yeah, okay, sure, you know, whatever. Not thinking. So he, that's how he got my phone number. And so, yeah. and so from there, um, uh, like, he texted me later that night and was saying all, like, sweet things and you know i wasn't dating or doing anything so it was very nice to hear and that was like the hook mm -hmm. was it sweet things like a, a timeshare sweet thing or was it no, a sweet thing personal. talking about how he was gonna come on a white horse and, and wear armor and, yeah. and save you from all your troubles yeah yeah it, okay so 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 note, note to self ladies khaki pants <laughs> try to be helpful he he wrestled you for your phone number and took it from you, and then, and then he offered free things to you, uh, that and sweet and sweet and sweet things. Right. Beware of men like that, even if you're in New Zealand. So just be careful. Yeah. So all right. Beware. All right. So so beware. just beware. There, there you go. Beware. I would you have that discussion with your daughter? Go like, beware. Exactly. Okay. So now, uh, from 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 the airport, at some point you you decided that he was going to be the person that you would be able to walk hand in hand down the beach with for eternity. Not, not, did it turn not out Not after that, not after that, but like after that evening. And then he brought me to the presentation the next day, me, my daughter and I, and like it, it okay. It was like that attraction. So. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. No, it wasn't a timeshare attraction. This is like, the tra you were just, you were just, you weren't a timeshare gold digger or nothing like that. You just actually. Just, <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, I mean, like, okay, so seriously though, you you said okay, you were attracted to him. He had he had qualities that appealed to you. 
And so uh, at what point did it become clear to you that you were going to spend a, a great a great deal of your your committed life to him when did you guys did you get you guys got married at a certain time yeah uh, after that or got married like that like right then and there you know like just within a couple days like nine days of knowing each other okay hold on a second that's not in my notes. No. <laughs> no. no. I totally missed. I'm going like, did I miss this? No, no. Okay. I, no, I, sorry, I, missed, I missed that. So, I'm sorry, repeat that for me. Nine, excuse me. Nine days after you met Khaki Boy, so part, you, you got married? Part of, it, part of it was because he couldn't come to the U.S., right? And I'm like, oh, I want you to, oh, I okay. want you to come to the U.S. Like, we decided we were going to do this thing and, you know, have a okay. relationship and everything because he told me he was single, which he wasn't. He was living with a girl. Oh, he was. And he just had a baby. Like it. All, all oh, wow. Lies, all of the lies eventually came out. I just didn't know it at the time. That's so, that's usually the way it works. All the all the lies do get exposed. Right. <laughs> that's what happens. So you're I, right. I, I, and so I, wait, I, wait. He he had a girlfriend. I'm sorry. He had a girlfriend already. They just had a baby. When he was talking to you. Yeah. They just had a baby. Mm-hmm. And I feel okay. I feel go ahead. Terrible. What? But I didn't know it. Yeah. No, no, you didn't. No, you hey, you don't know. You don't know. So, 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 and so, what took place within that nine day time frame, or on the ninth or tenth day? So we had like a little wedding ceremony, and um, yeah, it was lovely. And then I started the process mm -hmm. for him to come over to the U.S. Uh huh. Um, so it was really nice. And then, and then I was going back like every other month because I worked for myself. So I had the flexibility. My daughter wasn't okay. in school. So I could, you know, we went and lived like a family for, you know, we would spend summers there. And eventually, oh, cool. eventually mm -hmm. it got to the point where, it, you know, the paperwork wasn't going fast enough for him to come over here. So that's when I made the decision oh. to, go, to move over there. Okay, so you moved to Mexico. Yeah, you lived there. Yes. How how long how long did you live there? If I may ask. About probably about um three years or so, like on and off. About three years. Yeah. Yeah, and so the when did it when did it get your attention that things were not going in the best direction emotionally for you and your daughter? Like from the beginning, but my daughter was so. Well, I'm not even going to talk about that part, like, but, um, I think from the beginning, just his anger when we weren't together and I was back in the U S and he was still in Mexico, he would accuse me of like crazy things. And I'm, I'm home with my two year old. I'm not, I'm, I'm with her 100% of the time. I'm certainly not going out and doing anything. I have a business. I, you know, so it was always trying to justify that I was doing the right thing and I'm not cheating. He would always accuse me of cheating or I didn't call him fast enough. I didn't pick up the phone fast enough. And I'm like, wow, you, you have children. You know how it is to have a two year old. Like, <laughs> you cannot, yeah, spend believe hours, me, I know, yeah. you can't spend hours, <laughs> three, and hours. Three of them. <laughs> right. You can't talk <laughs> on the phone for hours and hours. That's just not realistic, you know, and I did my best. So I tried to like prove my loyalty by going over as much as I could, which, you know, it was every other month, pretty much. And um, to, to Mexico, mm -hmm. to, to Mexico. Okay. Yeah. Until I finally moved there. So, okay. How did that work? How did that work out then? That How did that pattern of, of lifestyle work out in the long run? Did it, did it make him happy? No, he was never happy. And just, wow. just being there, you know, he he always had like a violent tendency, but as soon as I moved, it got progressively worse. So when you moved there, his behavior didn't get better. It got worse. Mm -hmm. What did you do about that? Um, I tried to stick it out as much as I could. Um, so I got pregnant and I ended up leaving twice. So I left once because like the violence was 
so bad. He held a gun to my head when I was pregnant. You know, it was, oh, wow. it was just always something. So at that point, I left for a little bit and mm -hmm. I came back here to, to the US. And, um, you know, within that time, he was so apologetic. He's like, um, you know, I'll do whatever it takes. I know I need to change. I'm so sorry, this and that. And I went back foolishly, nothing changed. And I, I always knew we had discussed um, having the baby here anyway. I didn't want to have the baby in Mexico. So mm -hmm. I ended up coming back to have mm -hmm. my first little baby. And mm -hmm. um, I wasn't planning on going back after that. But once I had the baby and he found out it was a boy, that's, mm -hmm. he, he again made all of his <laughs> promises to change and foolishly again I went back wanting to keep my family together wanting to give him the opportunity to, to um, get to know his son mm -hmm. and nothing changed and then as soon as I got back I got pregnant like right away and you know this this leads me to kind of where where I am now like so mm. And, and so you're talking, yeah, because you told, you highlighted something to me. You had this, the violence and the abuse was, was a, a pattern that was a part of his lifestyle, uh, which did not fit, of course, like any normal person, and you're a normal person. That didn't fit with your lifestyle, but you're still talking about a 16-month-old baby, and then you had another baby, they're 13 months apart, correct? I think that's what you highlighted. Or did, was it, am I getting that right or no? So when I went back to Mexico after I had my first, the first baby, you know, right. um, he was, he was three months when I decided to travel back there. Oh, okay. And so then okay. I got pregnant, like, I want to say within that <clears throat> month. And so uh, the babies are 13 months apart now. So I have, now, okay. I have now right. a three month old right. and a 16 month old. And then I have my daughters who's uh, almost 70. At any point, was, was your baby taken from you? Yes. So he, he became violent one day. We had some kind of issue, who knows. Um, and I had to leave the house. I was just in that fight or flight mode. Um, and he kept the baby. He wouldn't give the baby back to me. And I couldn't. Mm. I was, like, fearing for my life. So I was trying to take the baby, but at the same time, keep my baby safe uh, because, mm -hmm. because that's just what my brain was telling me. I could only fight him so much if he's holding on to my baby and I don't want him to get hurt. And thank God my daughter was in school, so she, you know, she didn't see any of this either. But um, mm -hmm. I left and he refused to give me the baby back. So... Mm -hmm. How did it end up getting worked out? I was already pregnant anyway with the, with the other baby. Hmm. So how did it all work itself out? Um, well, I never went back to that house. Um, I stayed in a hotel for like a week. And he kept saying, oh, well, you don't have stable housing. So I'm never going to give you the baby back unless you get stable housing or unless you come back to live with me. And... Mm -hmm. I said, okay. So I ended up renting, renting a place. And, I, and he eventually mm -hmm. got sick of having the baby because he works a lot. He couldn't take care of him. Mm -hmm. And so he's like, oh, come get your baby. So I did. And I stayed in Mexico. Again, we were like trying to work things out. Um, and so I was staying at the house a little bit, but I was still... I still kept my place, the place that I was renting. Mm -hmm. And then like the final straw was on New Year's. He just got so drunk and I had the baby. I was, so I was pregnant of course, and I had my little baby in my mm -hmm. arms and he, he like just beat me so bad. He broke all the bones in the side of my face. He, I, oh my goodness. I had to get, I couldn't work for months, like I want to say like almost two months because my face was so bad. Um, 
so I had to go to the emergency room. I, I don't know how I made it out with my daughter and my other, and the little baby, my, my Amelia. I don't know how I made it out, but I did. And I got a taxi and I never went back and, and you know, that's where I'm at. And I never will. Yeah. You, you have, you have, uh, you have made, you have made choices now that shows that, that you want to make sure that you're protecting your children and yourself. Yeah. My kids, uh, my kids could and, never see that. Never. Yeah. Right. 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 Yeah. And, and, and you to be commended that you're doing the best that you can with what you have in the set of circumstances that you're presented with. You're maximizing the best you can out of every situation and, and your children in the long run are definitely going to be, uh, going to be grateful to you, uh, when they're able to look back that, that you did what you needed to do at this moment in time. If, if a person finds themselves in a situation like that, if you're talking to someone, and maybe you've already done this, uh, but if you're talking to someone who's been in a situation like this or moving toward that direction, what are some red flags that you can point out that a woman needs to give mind to so that she doesn't get involved in this type of a domestic violence situation? Oh, my gosh. I would say, you know, if – a person is in that situation just get out right away because it only gets worse it in our in our case you know we were together for i want to say uh almost four years and it just got progressively worse and worse and worse and eventually wow. i think he will kill he would kill me if i stayed it never uh, gets better never i don't care what anybody says What some of the warning signs that, that shows that it's not going to get better is um, there seems to be, based upon what you're saying, there's some strong manipulation in play right. to be able to get. It's almost as if that person is trying to be able to, to put you in their presence so they can put their hands on you. Yeah. Does that make, does that make any sense? I'm saying, it, I'm saying it as a guy on the outside looking in that it's almost as if that person wants to make sure you come closer, not so they can talk. You know, see, when people talk sometimes, you can tell when they just want to talk to you. All right. <laughs> it, you know, in their tone, it's just like, oh, hey, we're just going to talk. You know, but it's clear that you picked up that no, 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 no. If I'm anywhere near you or the children, you're going to get physical. Right. And, and my stronger fear, too, is when – my, I have two boys, the, the two little ones are boys. My fear is that when they start having an opinion about things or they, you know, they disobey in any way, he will hurt them. Because true. that's true. That's a good point. Yeah. He believes right. that it's okay. I, I don't think. Right. I don't think right. he thinks that it's wrong. He thinks. He thinks yes. That, yeah. Good point. Good point. Yeah. Now, now, from a therapist standpoint, I'm just now I'm gonna go down a road again. The whole shows are not scripted, so so we're just we're just we're just talking. Just talking. talking. I'm trying to oh, to try to cry. To cry. <laughs> no, 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 no. Hey, I cry with you. I got a shirt. I'll start crying. Too. No, because right. this is like <laughs> we're okay. We're okay. I, so hey, man, we're human. This is all you know. So all three of my kids, you be human first. Human first, all right. Uh, so, so um, now you're a therapist. Let's take let's take let's take it from that standpoint again. Red flags or different things could stand out to a person. Uh, maybe maybe the guy's aggressiveness. Maybe a number of things can come into play. Uh, but how can you be of help to someone who has gone through something like this as a therapist with your therapist hat on? How could you possibly? What could you say to a person that's going through this? Let's say somebody sees this later or uh, listen to it now. What are some things that you can highlight to them that they need to keep in mind so they can, they can hold on to their own dignity? I feel like it's important if they do know my story, which, you know, when I'm in therapist mode, I don't share my story, but. Yeah, understandable, understandable. You know, with with other people, I do. Like, if I'm doing coaching or something, I feel a little bit more right, open right. to share. But um, 
I'm doing it by myself. Like, yeah. I, if I can do it, you know, and get out, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> anybody can do it. Yeah, just, yeah. You just have to know that it's never going to get better. As much as you love the person, you know, in al they have the saying, detach with love. And that's, you know, that's what you have to live by. You can love this person so much, but they are never going to love you the way that you need, and they will never give you what you need. Mm-hmm. They're 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 emotion they're emotionally uh, uh they're emotionally unavailable they can't to give you yeah yeah and yeah they can't they and they're really looking for their next supply anyway so oh good point the entire time that we were together he was still talking to other girls you know telling them oh you know my my wife we're not getting along this and that it just the same thing he said to me about the girl he was living with telling me he was single and he has a newborn baby at home. Like, no. So, so you proved to be the, a, a supply to him when he was already with somebody else. Right. And, and the cycle just continues. But once he felt me pulling away, then he would come back with the love bombing and, um, you know, the, the future faking, as they call it. Like our little <laughs> happily ever after, and then I would get sucked back in again. So you you end up getting drawn back into that situation because he's promising to you that he's going to be better. Right, and of course I want that for my kids. I want my kids to have their dad, but it's it's not possible. Yeah. And that 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 domestic violence situation. Um, easily, I think you kind of alluded to this, could easily turn into one where he would now be threatening your son or your daughter right. or, or or the newborn or the newborn. Right. Because he couldn't regulate himself to know that, that that is not the way you're to treat a woman. That is not the way to treat your family. As a man, that is unacceptable mm-hmm. because there is no way any good comes out of that. There's none. Yeah. That just pushes people. That pushes people away. Now we, you find uh, we're gonna we're gonna look at what Angela has there. Uh, can you see the screen there? Um, well, we in Mexico. I'll read it. I'll read it. I, I'll read it real yeah. quick. It says, "I hope he's. I hope he's not free to do this to another woman." Oh wow. The thing. Uh, yeah, that's the that's thing actually is, kind of my thinking too. But right. go ahead. You were gonna but, say. But in Mexico, the laws aren't like they are in the U.S. So it's been. This happened, oh. the, the worst incident. So there's been multiple police reports that, that I had to do when I was in Mexico. But right. um, they don't incarcerate the person right away. Really? I have to go through, oh. um, for, I had to get a lawyer. I have to go through a psychological evaluation. Now there's COVID. And, um, you know, so, so it's a very long process. Eventually he will have a warrant like if I do follow through with it but he can't come to the U.S. anyway so I guess you know I'm like torn with that but I do want you to know that something can happen I just but the laws are different there yeah a a challenging situation a set of circumstances and at this point you are being a power mom you are that's the that's, yeah. that's the term I'm giving you. That's just the term I'm giving. I just made that up by the way. I just want you to know I like that. It. I was gonna call you su- I was gonna call you super mom, but there's a little problem with the word super in that. See, because I I, I equate super with supermarket because then I start thinking of food and it, okay. So anyhow, so I just look weird that way. So anyhow, what I was gonna say is power mom. So power mom. Uh, maybe yeah. you know what? You know what? If you if you if you write a if you write a book, there you go. There's your title right there. That's just right. Right. just yeah. you know. I'll All right. Don't. Don't send me any money. There you go. Just put, matter of fact, just put that in your put that in your bio. Just put that in your bio or your or your IG or our Facebook page. Is you know I'm a power mom. Hashtag power mom 2020, and you start a whole new yes. trend. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, Angela, Angela, Angela's throwing out some words. Matter of fact, Angela's going to uh, be a guest, uh, hopefully on the show. I get to torture her next week. We'll get a chance to talk. But uh, she put, "Is it wrong that I would talk him into coming and?" set him up <laughs> the, that part of me scares me my revenge side laugh out loud. Oh, okay no. i'm laughing because i i have i have had a lot of people ask me that uh who are 
clients and uh, your take on that. I'm laughing because I, I want to say something, but I'm not going to say anything. So go, go ahead. You're up, Colleen. Um, if I was in Mexico, um, he can't come to the U.S. He can't. There's, there's no way. However, if I was in Mexico, I have had... <laughs> <laughs> I've I've had thoughts like that of of setting him up. Yeah. Be careful. <laughs> <laughs> be awesome. careful. I think it's this is awesome. gonna be on social media, and if anything happens, that... they're gonna be looking for you. Angela, you see what you started. You see what you started, Angela. I think it's normal. Like, okay. It's normal to feel that way, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Just, wait, okay, I, I, I have to say, okay, I know I'm talking with you right now, but I've got to say this to Angela. Listen, there's a reason why I asked her to be on the show, and this is exactly why. Now I'm going to start laughing, can't stop laughing because I get going. So, so I, this is a very serious subject. However, Angela, that's very funny. That's very, that's very funny. That sounds like something one of my sisters would do to somebody. It wants to, that sounds exactly what one of my sisters would do. Don't be sorry. Never be sorry, Angela, when you're dealing with me. We're all good in the neighborhood. Okay. It's cool. And but it's what I was normal say. to have those thoughts. So I just want to tell everybody that. It doesn't mean anything will be followed through upon, but it's normal. <laughs> <laughs> the way you said that was like, it doesn't mean anything. I'm not doing anything. Do we follow through? Exactly. <laughs> <It's> like, exactly. <laughs> but it can cross your mind. Uh, okay. So anyhow. All joking aside, though, but um, of course you're innocent until proven guilty. <laughs> no, I'm, just I'm just joking. I'm just joking. Uh, I see that. I can see that right now. You and Angela get together and get him across I the border, and you guys just—that's just, that's just bad. That's. that's just, <laughs> you guys, yeah, you guys will be. You guys are gonna become DM buddies right now. Now you did make me cry, Angela. Angela you made me cry. That was funny. Okay, so that is the bad. That is the dark. That is the Darth Vader side of us coming out. Now we're gonna. We're gonna step into the Jedi side, to the light, and uh, I just have to have to ask you about. Uh, uh, here we go. Um, I, I, I understand it's it's hard to to leave. It's it's hard to leave in situations like that. Someone may be listening that has had to deal with that or look at this. It's hard to leave in situations like that. You left how many different times? How many times did you leave? Um. Three before I left for good. Three. I was three. Yeah. And then, and then a fourth time per se, or is that what you're saying? A fourth time you left for good, or the third time you left for good? Fourth, fourth time it was for good. For good, yes. Yeah. You did emotionally though. Uh, just kind of describe for people, especially if somebody who's looking at that as a as a possible uh, uh, outcome of their situation. Um, for their for their safety sake, uh, and by all means, if someone is in that situation, there are domestic violence yeah. hotlines uh, that uh, you can connect to. Right. I'm sorry, you were going to say no. Go ahead, you were going to say reach out to me, or there's domestic violence hotlines. But yeah. really, figuring out a safety plan, and I can help you with that. I, it's so important to have a safety plan, to have money set aside, you know, or if you don't have money, just figuring out other avenues. There. There, right. there is a way out. You don't have to stay in that situation. Correct. Right. And do me a huge favor. If the people are going to need to reach out to you, please say your IG page uh, nice and clear and loud for everybody so they can reach out to you. Could you say that your page again? So it's Colleen, so they can find you. Colleen Marie Therapy. Okay. Uh, and so um, if you could, uh, if you need to reach out to somebody, you, you, you could uh, reach out to... Uh, Colleen to do so. Um, now, emotionally, what was that like for you the first two, three times when you're trying to leave? You were, you were torn, uh, confused. I, 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 I don't want to put words in your mouth. And so let me just, what was it like for you emotionally? I was just always really torn that I wasn't doing the right thing because we were legally married. We're still legally married. Um, you know, we're not together, but just wanting, wanting my children to have a family, wanting my children to have their father, um, wanting to know that I did everything to save my marriage. We went to counseling. We did, it's not like we didn't do things um, leading up to this. 
but you know, even my counselor, we had a therapist in Mexico and even she saw me beat up and she's like, what are you doing? Oh, wow. And this was before I got pregnant. She's like, you need, oh, wow. she's like, you need to stop. But the light bulb still didn't go off. So I'm just hoping that my story can help one person for the light bulb to go off sooner before they get their face broken or their hands broken or, you know, whatever, like before they can get, they get hurt. The, 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 the life that you have led has been uh, up to this point has been uh, an emotional roller coaster uh, with, uh, with violence uh, running through it in this situation with, with this man. Um, in a month that highlights domestic violence, October, um, I appreciate you being on today and, and talking about this. Uh, it means a lot. Um, uh, I'm going to talk with you some more. We, we're going to do some, some other talking about other things and, and hopefully a future project or two to highlight some other things. Yeah. Um, I, will not tor I will not torture you anymore. <laughs> Uh, with, with, wait, 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 Angela and I are not gonna. My, Angela was like the co-host today. Oh, so, well, so she's my like co-host. So uh, right, it. you and Angela need to talk with each other. Uh, <laughs> she is a true delight. She has a really great page, by the way. But today, uh, you were the focus of attention, and 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 I wanted to highlight uh, your story and uh, bring attention to what you're doing as a therapist, and that you're there to help people get an exit plan and a strategy when they're dealing with domestic violence uh, and that you can be a strong support uh, to women that are, that are experiencing this. Anyone uh, that gets to watch this, if you know anyone dealing with domestic violence this month, I'm highlighting that uh, on my page here, Narc Abuse TV. And uh, by all means, I thank you so much for being here this morning. Thank you. Uh, and as a therapist, you got more, as a therapist, you got more important things to do than talking to me. So you need, you got people you need to help instead of putting up with my goofy, my goofy face. But uh, uh, I appreciate you a great deal. And I know how much it took for you to do what we're doing this morning. Yeah. And, and, and I am, yes, yes, I am not. Power I, I, I can't, I can't. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. You proved to be a power bomb because uh, you, you were extremely nervous and you knocked it out the ballpark and you are going to be exemplary to somebody out there as to how they can navigate uh, and get to an emotionally and physically safe place away from violent men. Yeah. Uh, I appreciate it a great deal that we're, you're, you, you're kicking off the month of October for me and bringing attention to this particular subject of domestic violence. I appreciate it a great deal. Uh, much, much love to you, my sister. Thank you. My sister from another mister. That's right. And, uh, uh, and stay away from the khakis. No, no khakis. No khakis. <laughs> no, no khakis. No khakis. No, stay away from men that wear khakis. And I appreciate it a great deal. You're a true, true treasure. And uh, thank you for holding on and, and making it through. And, uh, and I will talk to you soon. Sounds good. All right? Thank you so much. Thank you. We'll see you later. Bye-bye. Right. Thank you, everybody. Bye.